Hey Luke here with CatsAndCarp.com and I'm going to show you how to catch catfish from a river. And I'm doing it using a bobber and a circle hook and a little bit of fish. That's all you need. Fishing from rivers is really different. Um, especially these small little tiny rivers with lots of current. It's a lot more like fly fishing and less like the cat fishing you're used to. You do a lot more wading around and casting and prowling around and a lot less sitting around and waiting. It's a much more exciting, it's, it's beautiful, it's, it's fun. Uh, you generally don't catch as big a fish, but it's really engaging and it's something I really love to do every once in a while. Now unfortunately, I don't live near a really good river, so I've had to come a little bit of a ways to get to this spot. And consequently, I only have about an hour, hour 15 minutes to fish. So this is going to be quick and dirty, and uh, hopefully I can pull out something before uh, I call it quits. So let me show you what I'm using. I've got uh, a Daiwa Regal 3500 uh, bite and run reel. Uh, this is my go-to cat fishing and carp fishing reel. I use this whenever I'm doing kind of smaller fish. Um, and by smaller, I mean uh, under 20 pounds. I've got some 20 pound spider wire braid on it. I've got a basic uh, float, one of the weighted ones, and I've got a circle hook with a, a piece of shad on it. I had a bunch of shad in my freezer, so that's what I decided to use as bait. I've got it on uh, Cabela's 7-foot MagTouch rod. It's a carbon fiber rod. They don't make these anymore, but I love them to death. Uh, I own like five of them, and I'd buy more if they still made them. But uh, seven foot rod, really sensitive one piece rod, a lot of backbone to it. A, a bass rod is a really good match for this. So if you've got like a bass fishing rod, that'll work too. But uh, kind of a medium light um, uh, action is really good for this. And uh, I like a seven footer. Fishing in small rivers and creeks is all about current. The fish want to be close to the current, but not in the current. They want to be able to gobble up food that's washed downstream without fighting the, the flow. So places like underneath spillways or weirs are really great. There's these deep pools that have relatively little current and the food's washing straight into these pools. So take your bobber, drop it in, let it drift into the pool, and if nothing hits, move it down a few feet and just work your way across the entire bottom of the spillway and just work that bobber through all the different nooks and crannies in the pool. It doesn't have to be in there long. If there's fish, they'll hit it right away. And just watch out that these spillways don't uh, get wash you away there. They can get a little nasty sometimes. Here's another great spot. You have a deep pool with a little creek coming in. And you can see how the water slows down because it's widening out and it's getting deeper. So. Just cast your bobber in there and work the deep spots and start close to you and work further away. That way, if you catch a fish, you're not as likely to scare the other fish in the pool. So fish close to you and then slowly work away. And here you can see another great spot. This is where the current gets a little uh, slows down because the water gets deeper. Start really close to shore and then fish gradually further away and work your way through the pool. And here's a really great, another good an image of a good spot. You have this deep pool and the water's flowing into it and you can see how the current slows down when it hits the deep spot. That's where the fish are gonna be. They're gonna be close to where that water's dumping in the pool, but in the deeper water. And they're gonna be waiting for little fish to get washed downstream and to gobble them up. So uh, I get out and position myself and I'm gonna cast into the current and then let it drift my bobber into the deeper spots of the pool. So that bait is floating naturally, just like a chunk of shad that was washed downstream would, would float. If the fish are there, they'll hit quickly.
He's a nice old channel cat. Look at him. Hey, man, he's got some battle scars. But look how quickly they hit it and how aggressively they hit it. That food floats over the top of them and just pow. They're going to get it quick. You don't have to sit there and let your bobber soak for long periods of time. You put that bait in front of a fish, he's going to nail it. It's just getting in the pools and being in the right place that matters. So work the spots. Don't let your bobber, your bobber sit in one place for long. And uh, unfortunately, I, I, had to, I had to move on because uh, these, uh, these young men decided that they, they would go swimming right where I was fishing. And that happened. So at any rate, it, if you like this video, check out some of our other great videos, including some great bank fishing tips and a video from a nice overnight trip with Tommy fishing from the shore. If you like what you see, don't forget to click subscribe. We put out new videos every week. Thanks for watching.